Hey guys. All right. So it's been a while since I opened the channel, but I, you know, quarantine got me uh, some time to make some videos here. So um, one of the ones I want to start with is installing PFSense in a virtual environment. It's what I see a lot of on Reddit. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. So let's start with, with the basics. Let's go ahead and create a virtual machine. Uh, so for this video, we're going to be using Proxmox. Um, I'm looking at the monitor above me, so excuse me that I'm not looking directly at the camera. Um, I'm going to create videos for Hyper-V, for VMware. Uh, I might even do um, uh, VMs uh, native in Ubuntu. Um, but for now, let's start with Proxmox because that's probably what a lot of people are using. All right, so uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a Windows VM because we need a VM that we can do for testing. Uh, so let's go through this. Uh, start at boot, that's fine. Operating system. Oh, my Windows 10 system, all that's fine. We're going to keep all of that the same. Hard drive, I'm going to change this to SATA. Um, there's some issues with the SCSI um, driver in Windows through Proxmox. 32 gigs is fine for this test. CPU, I'm going to give this a quad. Uh, memory, 4 gigs will be fine for our test. Uh, network, I'm actually going to leave that at no network for now. Um, I'll come back to that and explain why and then confirm, go ahead and start when created, and that'll go ahead and launch that. So that was a really bad idea. I'm gonna tell you why that's a bad idea because we need to go make changes to the networking in Proxmox before we do anything. So while that's still booting and has nothing in there, we'll just go ahead and stop that. So don't click the start after created. Um, click on PVE, which is your host uh, inside of your data center view. We'll go to networking and we're gonna create a bridge. Um, so because I'm doing this completely virtually, um, the bridge is not going to be attached to a physical adapter. I'll make another video later when I have a hardware on my bench that I can show you how to do this if you have more than one NIC in your box. But right now I only have one NIC. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do, we'll leave all the defaults because it's going to work just fine. We are not going to add an IP address to it because we are not making the system routable. Effectively, we've kind of created a switch. It's a bridge. But in this case, we're going to use it as a switch. I'm going to reboot the host really quick, and this will be back really quick. So um, what, what we're going to do is stick Windows inside of Proxmox. We're not going to let it touch uh, my actual network. We're going to install PFSense in Proxmox as well. And we're going to put Windows through PFSense into my network. I don't have a, a block of five static IPs, so I can't get Proxmox, sorry, PFSense. Uh, a public IP address, but we can emulate that. Uh, what I'm going to tell you, though, is that if you're playing with Proxmox inside of your house and you're already behind a firewall, you'll have problems if your network is already a 192.168.1.x. Um, the reason is, is because the LAN side of PFSense is already 192.168.1.x. Um, so the easiest way to get around that is once we install PFSense, um, we can just go ahead and change that right from the command line. Um, it, it's not even command line, right from the console. Uh, so we can change that to a 172 or, you know, we can even change it to a 192.168.2.x. Um, either, either of those are going to work. It just can't be in the same 24-bit subnet that almost every house is at. Unless you're plugged into a Comcast router, then you probably have a 10110.x, uh, in which case that'll work just fine. Okay, I think Proxmox is back up. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back here. Uh, can we, yep, okay, so cool, that's running. So let's jump over to the console of Windows for a sec. That's booting, awesome. Uh, let's go and check, yep, that's there. There's no apply configuration necessary, brilliant. So let's create another VM. Uh, we'll do this as PFSense. Uh, I definitely want this to start a boot uh, OS. I've already uploaded the newest release of PFSense. I love the new installer, it's so quick. Uh, system, I'm going to leave all of this as default. CBIOS is just fine. Uh, hard disk again, SATA. Uh, 32 gigs is a little excessive for this, but I'm going to leave it at the defaults. Uh, if you start doing logging, that's really when you need a, a larger hard drive. Um, but if you're doing PFSense and you're doing logging and you're really doing that kind of uh, large of an, in, an intense installation, you'll want to do this in a physical world um, so you can really take advantages of ZFS. But if you're doing this in Proxmox, you're already taking advantages of ZFS. So make yourself a second hard drive. Later video, we'll get into logging and doing a lot of that fun. 
CPU, um, I always make sure to give uh, any networking device, whether it's uh, virtual FortiGates, PF Senses, um, Untangle, uh, Vieta, uh, whatever I'm doing, at least two cores. Uh, I'll, I'll get into a deep conversation about that later. I have so many videos that I want to make for you guys, but um, at least two cores. If you can do more, awesome. Um, for what we're doing, two is just fine. Um, desk phone, can't stop it. Uh, memory, I'm going to do two gigs, plenty, networking. Uh, so I'm going to configure networking after. Uh, let's go start. Uh, let's not start after created, and we'll go ahead and click finish. Perfect. So PFSense is coming up right over here. We'll go under hardware, add, uh, where is it, networking device. It's right on top of it. So we'll do WAN first, uh, Intel E100 uh, works perfect. Go away list. Uh, do, 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 do. No, we don't want a firewall because we're installing a firewall. Uh, yep, all that looks fine. All right, we're gonna add another one, uh, but this time we're gonna add this to VMBR1. So this is the switch um, that's internal to uh, Proxmox all by its own. I promise I'm gonna work on these ums. It's a problem I've had all my life. So this is gonna be how Windows connects to the PFSense. Uh, if you had a second interface, this is also what you would select here as well anyways. Um, so same, same setup, click add, and then we're gonna go ahead and click start. One moment. Can't stack the desk phone. I'm trying to do my videos as live as possible so you can see when I mess up so you guys know what mistakes not to make. I'm not gonna edit and make this into a perfect, pristine, glitzy how-to tutorial videos. Um, I'm just gonna be straight up and real with you guys. Okay, so uh, let's open the console on you as well. Uh, perfect. And let me open up the console on the Windows machine because I'm gonna flip back and forth between the two of these. Uh, cool. So now both of those are open. Let's just minimize this and we'll size these over as well. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and fly through the PF in sense installer. So we're just going to install, continue with the default key map auto. I love the new installer because now we can do ZFS. So if you are on a, um, a physical system and you have more than one drive raid and redundancy is a lot easier. Uh, auto UFS, perfect. So it's just on its merry way. So Windows, we'll go ahead and next, install now. Uh, I'm assuming you guys know how to go through the, the Windows installation. So I'm just gonna kind of fly through this, so. Oh, fudge, in my Proxmox, I did not put these on the SSD. I think I just left these as the default, whatever. And it's still moving along quite quick. Yep. Uh, look at that, the installation's finished per PFSense before I can even get through the options of Windows. <laughs> That's nuts. That's how fast that is. All right, uh, do you wanna make any system modifications? No, reboot the system. Um, and you should bypass the CD drive. We'll see what happens. I'm not gonna eject the, uh, the disk. And Windows is just dragging behind, holy crap. I might have to edit this and fast forward. Because <laughs> we can't get to the LAN side of PM Sense right now because the LAN is directly connected to this uh, Windows machine. So actually, yeah, once PF Sense boots, I'm just going to pause this until the uh, the Windows installation finishes. finishes. <laughs> oh, good job, Windows. Good job. And partially my fault for not putting it on an SSD. The ISO is on an SSD. So PFSense should realize both both of the interfaces and automatically assign them um, in my testing. Yes, I did a little testing before this video. Uh, that's exactly what happened. So let's see what happens. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe by the time it's done booting, Windows will be done. It's a fair race right now. Forever. This was a lot faster when I put it on the SSDs. Cool. 
Yeah, look at that. Okay, so it totally assigned them. Uh, the first interface, which was the one that's connected to my home network, uh, is assigned as the WAN. And I can definitely tell that by the IP address it got. Uh, I run a 10 dot uh, at the house. And then the LAN side is the 192.168. So this is what I was explaining. If you have 192.168.1.x, um, you can't do the same subnet on multiple interfaces when you're trying to route between the two of them. It creates havoc in, in, in most cases. Uh, you just can't assign it. Um, so, all right, I'm pausing the video. Be right back once Windows is done. Yes. Okay, cool. So this is finally done. Okay, but I, I missed a step. And if you guys haven't caught it yet, um, I didn't make a change. So I'm going to, um, let's, let's go fix what I screwed up. Uh, browser window. Perfect. So windows, I didn't give it an interface. So let's add network devices and add it to VNBR one. No, we don't want a firewall because guess what? We're installing a firewall. Add Intel E100. Okay, cool. Uh, did this take effect? Yeah. Look at oh, come on windows. Are you kidding me? I just, you're connected to the network. You didn't set up your account on the network. So click these options now that you have internet. Sick. Skip for now. Okay, cool. So um, Windows computer is now behind the PF Sense, and the PF Sense is on my network. Simulated WAN. So if we open up Internet Explorer, and do you know what the first thing you do when you open up Internet Explorer? You install Chrome. Run, run my child. Installing Chrome, yes. Okay, can we take a moment to talk about Ninite? I feel like they don't get enough promo. I have no sponsors, by the way. Um, I just love Ninite. I use it everywhere. I actually have a pro subscription with them uh, and, it, and it works great. It really does. Once I get Chrome installed, because the only, only thing you ever use Edge for, um, sorry, Edge or Internet Explorer for, is installing Chrome. Uh, I will show 9IT really quick. And because I need Chrome to go into PFSense. Oh, almost missed one. I might have to pause this video and move the darn thing to the SSD because this is the slowness is just killing me. <laughs> no, I don't want to bend the start. Can you stop being slow? Okay, cool. Go away. El Chromo. El Bigo. Um, okay, so Nine It's awesome. You just scroll down, you literally tick the check boxes of the stuff you want, and then you click get Nine Night and it downloads them all simultaneously, installs them uh, with the silent of installer with no ads, no extra garbage. Um, it's great. And just for kicks and giggles, I'll install a couple of things here just so you can see. Blah, 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 blah. Nine Night opens, downloads the installer. Yes. And it just, it downloads them all uh, sequentially and it installs them. Uh, yeah, it's, I love it. It's great. Okay, go away. So we installed PFSense 192.168.1. Wham, bam. So certificate authority is not valid. That's fine. Proceed. Uh, I'll make a video about certificates and PFSense. That's a good idea. Should write all this down. Uh, okay, uh, default is admin admin. Oh, it's not, I haven't done this. Oh. <laughs> admin PF sense, my bad. I even make mistakes. Okay, default admin is set to the default value. Please change it in the user manager. That's fine. Default user manager, and I'll set this to monkey. My testing passwords are always monkey. Uh, El Salvador, great. PF sense. So yeah, I accept. Thanks. Go away. Go away. All right. And let's zoom out a little bit. Can you guys see that? Yeah, I can see it on my screen. Okay, cool. So default install, it's up, it's online. Um, if we open up a command prompt, we have internet. We have internet of the Windows machine through PF sense. Um, here, uh, we'll go to, where is it, status, 
traffic graph, land. Okay, cool. So keep graphs updated. Yep. Speed test, run speed test. I actually have gigabit. This should be going a bit faster. <laughs> But it's on DOSX, so I only have 40 upload. Gigabit down, 40 up, because that makes sense. It actually does. I'll make another video on why that makes sense, too. Okay, cool. So internet, and if we go back and take a look at PF sense, we can see, yeah, hey, right around the 200 mark is where we were hovering, and then right around 34 upload is where we were. So our internet is actually going through PF sense at this point. Um, by default, PF Sense is pretty secure. Doesn't let traffic inbound. It only lets traffic outbound from people that are uh, from devices that are behind your LAN. Um, so that's that's the basics of setting this up. Um, again, one, once I get a machine on the bench that has two physical NICs on it, I'll show how to do that because I'm sure you'll you want to do this in your home network too. To be honest, it's one it's one step. I'll, I'll show you what the the darn step is, anyways. Um, in Proxmox, go to your, uh, click on your host. Mine's just PVE. I didn't change it when I was installing. Um, in network, so your physical networking device, your physical interface, uh, in my case, mine's ENP3SO. Um, you just have to copy that name and add it to VMBR1. So in VMBR0, right now, the bridge port is the physical port that's going to, to the real world. Um, you know, ENP3SO uh, is right in there. And that's the interface that goes to, to the network. This is also the interface where you can put your IP address um, so you can access the interface of, of Prox as well. And if you wanted to put, uh, put one on this side as well, you can. But if you're going to connect this interface to your WAN, just add the physical interface into the bridge port section right here. But for the love of Pete, don't give it an IP address. You do not want your um, Proxmox being available to the world. So security is a problem here because you are now putting your internet traffic through a hypervisor and the hypervisor is the physical device connected to your to your WAN. We'll get a little bit more into why that's an issue and the, the security issues behind it again, another video. I wanna start making videos pretty frequently because I'm getting bored. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's where you would put it. That's what you would do. Um, and then we'll get into VLANs and doing more configuration stuff later. Until then, I'm almost at a 20 minute video. Gosh. Okay. Well, I'll see you guys later. Oh, uh, and if anyone wants to make me an intro video or exit video with sounds and glitzy thing, happy to use it. I'll even give you credit for it. I'll put your name up there, give you links, whatever. Okay. Bye.